Hi, welcome everybody. Uh, this is Basically News. My name is Mike B. It's March 12th, 2020. Uh, it's time is 2.11 p.m. My hair is a little higher than it should be. Whoop, there we go. Um, ooh, ah, 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 ah. What the fuck did you guys do, man? I'm gone for one day. I'm gone for one day. <laughs> one day. <laughs> and that's it. That's all it took. And now everything's falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> God, God, jeez. <sighs> All right, so did do shit. <sighs> I survived the trip. Yes, so I uh, I did go to San Francisco. Um, San Francisco is very uh not dead in terms of like traffic, but like real. Like I I've not seen so few people. Uh, walk around San Francisco like in my life and I've lived here well in my life I mean I lived here for like 12 years or so and I used to work in the financial district down in uh, well it's it's in the middle of the heart of San Francisco basically uh, and so I rode the BART train every single day which is our uh, public transportation and you know I, I, I experience traffic every day like so I know what it's supposed to look like uh, and let me tell you I've never seen it look like this now it's it's a drastic change for me because you know I don't leave the house very often because I'm stuck here with you guys, uh, day in and day out, <laughs> and uh, so leaving the house every time I leave and I go to the city, it I I can see the differences right because it's they're they're huge changes. Um, zombie, thank you so much. Whenever that shows up, thank you. Um, so. While I was gone, I've been collecting, I've been collecting uh, all week and yesterday uh, articles and what I've been doing is just DMing myself links to things that I find. I found that's the easiest way for me to collect links for news on the go was just to DM myself things. Um, but, you know, it's gotten to the point now where it's, it's so out of hand where I, I mean, like, I'm not even going to have like an official news show this week. Like, we're just going to. Plop open that right now. Like, we're just going to sit here, and I have a huge list of shit um, that we're going to talk about. Uh, you know, some of this stuff is is obviously, you know, gaming-related. Some of it's not, because, frankly, like, this thing is affecting all of our lives. Uh, you're going to need a disinfect chat. <laughs> Cover your mouth when you cough, when you sneeze. But listen, uh, I, 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 so I'm fucking quarantined. Fuck Where you at, beige? Um, but listen, like you guys should seriously take this stuff like serious. Uh, I just got the phone with my brother and my dad, I told my dad earlier and you know, my dad is taking it, you know, like, like dads do, I guess, you know, I was like, uh, my concern is primarily for my grandmother. She's 84 years old. She's my last living grandmother. Um, and my uncle Wayne, who is undergoing radiation treatment. So he is, you know, obviously got a, a suppressed immune system. And my dad has to take care of my uncle Wayne. My uncle Wayne is, um, uh, he has Asperger's. So he needs, you know, he thinks he's 11. He's not like, he doesn't need like his diapers changed or anything like that, but he doesn't, you know, he, he can't really like watch over himself. Um, and so my dad has to go there and like take care of him. Uh, and I told him, I was like, you have to take this stuff seriously. Like you have to take this seriously. He had a, he had a case nearby that was, and he lives relatively rural. Right. So I wasn't expecting this thing to get anywhere near him anytime soon. Uh, but he lives relatively, rel relatively rural. So he was pretty surprised to find out that there was a case near him. And I was surprised to hear that as well. And so I told him, I was like, dude, like this is not, this is not something that is just going to not seep into the, uh, you know, into rural America or rural Norway or whatever. Sorry to hear, by the way. Um, you know, quarantine and all that, but you know, it's, it's, it's something that it's a necessity, it's a necessity, right? It's something that has to happen, um, you know, for the health of, of the older generations, you know, um, obviously this is not, this, this is not something that has, you know, as we've seen, the data shows that this is not something that has a significant impact or really any impact on healthy young folks. So, you know, pretty much everybody that's watching this right now could pretty much say they're safe, even you, Han. <laughs> and you, Martha. <laughs> Even you guys are probably relatively uh, safe. Um, oh, but you know, hi, Perrin. Uh, through a quarantine, being sick. Oh boy, yeah, it's everywhere. Uh, so, yeah, the uh, you know my, the, the response I got from my dad at the end of the call was, 
I was like, Dad, just please take care of Grandma Teen. And he said, well, and he always has this like super long pause and he's in the country, right? So everything moves super slow out there, even time. Uh, and he says, well, I reckon. And that was enough for me. And so then I got the phone with him and I called and I talked to my brother. Uh, and I, and you know, he was in the same camp where a couple days ago he was like, well, I guess nobody cares about it out here because we have toilet paper galore and whatever. And then yesterday, Trump made his announcement. Uh, one of the, I mean, one of the first times that a lot of people in, in our generation have ever seen. Uh, prior to this, was like what, like the like announcements of like war, Vietnam War, um, or I mean, fuck, I don't even know. Like, just you know, these are these types of you know very serious you know type of like world impacting announcements only happen you know once a lifetime for a lot of folks. Um, and so, you know, I, I, I talked to him and I explained to him, it's like, you know, this shit is like serious. And he even, even he realized pretty quickly, you know, life comes at you fast. Like, you know, he was making fun of, you know, there not being toilet paper anywhere. Uh, my mom, my mom was in Vegas and she took a picture, uh, of, you know, of the, of the, the shelves empty, which we're used to like out here, the shelves have been empty. Um, and, and, you know, I've got him on board. It's like, okay, cool. Now he gets it. And so now I'm hoping that, you know, I, I could today maybe, and this is all unplanned, you know, but hopefully today, if there's anybody out there that you know that is, you know, on the fence or whatever, or if you're watching this and you're on the fence for whatever reason that this may not be that big of a deal, uh, we hope that it's not. We hope that it stops. Um, but... It is a big deal and you should take it seriously. You should wash your fucking hands. You should cover your mouth. If you feel symptoms, you should not go outside. You should not go like in public uh, and endanger other people. You may be fine because you're a healthy young man or woman and you can survive the, oh yeah, it's fine. You know, it's cough. I've had the flu before. I've had, I've had really bad cases of the flu before. I have pneumonia before, but, but the more people that catch this, even if you have mild symptoms and the closer that these hospitals get to reaching capacity to the point to where they, do not, they no longer have capacity to support even somebody with basic ass flu symptoms like you might have, that's when shit's going to start hitting the fan. Once the hospitals start getting overrun and it's going to get worse because the schools are starting to close. Ohio schools are closing. Grade schools. We already knew that colleges were starting to close down. Like real short notices, uh, notice on all these college campuses closing down, emptying out the dorms, kicking people out. Uh, grade schools are next. Um, it's already happened in Ohio starting next Monday, Maryland starting next Monday. And that was just as of when I started this stream 12 minutes ago. Uh, things are cha changing on a minute to minute basis. And I'm not trying to alarm you guys. As you know, I've been following this pretty closely for the past, you know, several weeks. Uh, and, you know, I, I have let it I have let it get to me. You know, I've definitely built up a little bit of anxiety over this whole thing, have trouble sleeping, uh, you know, panic attacks and shit like that. That is not this is not a character a thing that's normally a characteristic of, of me, but it has happened because I have a family that I have to, you know, take care of. Uh, my mother in law was here and she's in her eighties taking care of her mom who is 101. And I'm like, get the fuck out. Like you have to go back home. She lives in the middle of nowhere, California. It's like, you have to go back there. <laughs> That's where you have to go. Uh, Ontario schools closed two weeks as of 90 minutes ago. Uh, Disneyland just officially closed, uh, as of 35, 40 minutes ago. Um, the Hubs is an elementary school teacher, and they have started announcing shutdowns today. I anticipate that Declan School and actually all of California schools to uh, start to excuse me start to close. Um, what we'll probably get by next week is a number of uh, actually sorry. What we'll get by probably next week is the government like basically start with states, and then probably even Donald Trump himself saying that we have to close schools. Um, and these are things you know I've said this for a while that this is something that needs to happen because. Yes, kids are, care, are, are not susceptible to the virus in terms of like, you know, being detrimental to their health, but um, it is detrimental to anybody that's around them. Kids are notoriously germy. They don't take care of themselves, uh, you know, hygiene wise. Um, they go to school and they cough and they pick their nose and they touch things and then they go to the bathroom and they touch everything and they just don't, they don't take care of themselves and sometimes they don't heed the warnings that we give them because they're kids and it's just the thing that kids do. And so for me, I've been a big proponent of keeping kids at home. I understand that this is going to have a massive economic impact, uh, but it's going to happen eventually anyways. <laughs> uh, yes, they're carriers. And it's very important to remember that kids are carriers. 
Okay. Anybody can be a carrier, but kids are basically like just bus loads of germs. Okay. They're just, just a fucking bus full of germs and everything they touch, they let one out at that stop. That's the way kids work. Uh, so while they may not show the symptoms, they are the bus driver. They will bring that shit to your front door. So, um, have I been checking up on Josh? You know, I haven't, but, uh, I have not. Honestly, there's so much stuff happening. I wish I would, I really should. Uh, but I mean, if you, if you want to hit, you know, just as close to home, uh, even Jasmine, uh, you guys remember Jasmine Horshack, right? Jasmine Horshack, she's got her own case to deal with here. She said, my household is sick. Chris has it the worst. You guys remember Chris, you guys remember IRL Jasmine from, from, uh, from the Twimo days. And you guys probably obviously remember Chris Hannell, uh, from, uh, the Daily Blink comic, uh, the, the, the World of Warcraft based, uh, Daily Blink comic, um, also uh, on the panel for various Game Breaker TV shows. Uh, so she says, my, my household is sick. Chris has it the worst. Symptoms line up. Uh, with COVID-19, he called our doctor and the clinic said they won't test him because he's not sick enough. He's pretty dang sick, but I guess we'll have to wait until it looks like he's dying. Thanks, Oregon and the GDC. Or sorry, CDC. Uh, GDC was closed. Um, Buff Mages, that's right. Buff Mages. That's him. Maybe that'll, that'll ring a bell. Ira, is that the gif of that little girl licking the pole? Licking the, uh, the handrail? I don't even have to look at it to know. <laughs> so, obviously... You know, this is something that is uh, that's blowing up and it's starting to have an impact on a number of things. Some of the stuff that you guys are already familiar with, as we already know, uh, the NBA has closed down. I had all this stuff open because it's just like, I mean, just trying to uh, trying to gather all this news together. It's just like it's impossible because it just keeps coming. <laughs> Maryland Public Schools closed March 16th through March 27th. Uh, what a lot of schools are doing is they're just basically taking what normally would be their spring break and just extending it. Uh, most kids. Or most, you know, school grade, your grade school students are going on uh, uh, spring break sometime in the next 30 days. And so a lot of what, you know, these, uh, a, a lot of what these districts are doing is they're just saying, okay, go on spring, spring break and just don't come back for an extra week or go on a spring break, uh, you know, a week early or whatever. Um, and so at least in, with that, you know, in, in that case, at least part of that week should have already been planned for by parents, Right. So the ones who needed extra daycare, they knew that spring break was coming. They had to have a solution for that. This is just going to add a little extra hardship in terms of like what happens uh, when they have to, when they would normally would have to go back. Uh, kids happy about school out, stay home and play some video games. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to have any kind of curriculum for them to go home. And, and that's going to be a, that's going to be a case by case basis with the, um, with you know the with the students in their uh, in their school district, uh, oh this this page disappeared. Okay, so somebody deleted something. Um, let me see. No 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 no. The we did find out. This is actually kind of funny. We did find out that uh, God I can't copy anything. E three shuts down right, and the way we found out was hilarious. Was this? And I got I got to be careful what I show here because this is not this is a, a, a eighteen plus feed. So we'll we'll try to keep it about as uh, you know <laughs> contained as possible here. But uh, Hot Girls Video sixty nine on Twitter said on uh, what was that? Uh, in the, in the AM last week, says E3 canceled due to concerns related to the coronavirus. Found out from a guy who pays me for private girlfriend experience sessions. Like, you guys didn't know what that meant. Uh, they're always COVID-19 free. <laughs> so, uh, so that's how we found out that E3 is canceled. And sure enough, they came out later and said that they were indeed canceled. Felwing, hey, what up? Uh, thanks for always being a rad voice of reason. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I'm trying. Shit's hard. It's hard. There's something because there's just so much. There's so much to filter. There's so much to filter. E3 is officially canceled. Um, the uh, the sports books and and various uh, areas of like Las Vegas they're closing down slowly. Uh, so they're losing business left and right there. Um, all major sports. Yeah, I mean like it's Major League Baseball is um, suspending all operations due to. And this says reportedly, but it did come out later. This is the first article that I found. Um, but they are, they did report later that uh, they are going to close for two weeks. And the two weeks thing makes a lot of sense because they're going to reassess at the end of that two weeks and then decide what they want to do from there. The NCAA said they're not going to play to fans. The women's, women's basketball said they're not going to play to fans. Uh, WNBA, sorry. Um, they're not going to play to fans. And then, of course, this fucking guy. Uh, can somebody tell me his name or leak? Or maybe I could get that video of uh, the NBA player who 
basically was rubbing microphones like this and then went into the locker room was on fucking around and like just basically not taking the the uh um not taking it seriously guess what he caught it rudy goldberg thank you so much let me go find that video and i'm gonna show you guys this because you need to know that you don't you don't joke don't joke about it because it will bite you in the ass <laughs> it will find a way uh oh i can't find this fucking video um Ruby antics, stupid antics cause the NBA to get it's shut down. Yeah, 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 let me see. Let me see. They have the actual video in here. Or is it just a bunch of pictures? Here we go. Got it. Yeah, so here he is getting up from the, uh, from, up, get up, get, fuck, this guy's so tall. Um, gets up and then he walks Press over. Touches all the microphones, right? Walks out. Ha 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 ha. Got jokes. Him and one of his teammates are diagnosed with uh, coronavirus. So don't, don't think, I, I understand that we want to make light of certain situations, but with these types of things, it's okay to maybe joke, but don't do things that could endanger other folks like that. Uh, Italy, all of Italy did in fact get free Pornhub su subs, which is hilarious. Pornhub's always come in clutch with that. Tom Hanks, Tom Hanks, I mean, that's, that's something to, uh, you know, that's, that's something to note because... You know, Tom Hanks is he's just a person like all, like any one of us, right? But he's but he's a person and he's susceptible to this. Uh but he's a notable person and it takes somebody it sometimes it takes someone like that to you know to, to to get people to wake up and see maybe maybe this is real. If Tom Hanks can get it and if and if the if if the universe is threatening to take Tom Hanks away from us, Maybe we start taking this a little bit more seriously. People will riot. Absolutely. Yeah. That would be a loss. That would be a, a un, a, just an unimaginable loss. Uh, next, it'll be what? Keanu Reeves or something, right? But this is going to happen. Um, I watched the... Matter of fact, let me play it for you. I'd like to play it for you because I feel like it's important to see this part here. Um, let me see. Mm, see and uh, Corona. Like I said, sorry, I don't. I don't have things necessarily like lined up. I typically have everything lined up for news, so we could just kind of boom, 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 uh, go through it. Uh, but I did not have that. You know, <laughs> I just came back from the trip. News is supposed to be tomorrow. Clearly, we cannot wait till tomorrow because everything is going to change. Things are changing so fast. Look at Italy three weeks ago. It was just chilling. Just, just chilling. Just, just, just having a day. And then, and then what? <laughs> then look what's happening now. Uh, here's a clip. Hopefully this is the right clip here. Let me pull it over. Look at Canada 3. Yeah, now it's chaos. I mean, Justin Trudeau is, is uh, isolating himself because somebody that he knows uh, has it. Uh, uh, it's, it's very possible that Trump has it too, actually. World leaders everywhere are having it. Uh, in Iran, actually, I think that there, some of their uh, upper cabinet members are diagnosed uh, with, I think, Brazil. There's a case maybe in Brazil in the upper upper you know, echelons that, that experience it. But I'm going to play this clip for you. Hopefully this is the right one. Again, I didn't have a chance to vet this stuff. But let me go ahead and play this for you guys here. Remind people this just was beginning. Probably the best guessment we have right now on what limited data we have is say this is going to be at least 10 to 15 times worse than the worst seasonal flu year we see. 10 to 15 times worse in terms of fatalities? Yeah, or? yeah, and, and just illness. In fact, I just I brought some numbers. We uh, conservatively estimate that this could... In, uh, require 48 million hospitalizations, 96 million uh, cases actually occurring, over 480,000 deaths that can occur over the next three to seven months with this situation. So this is not one that to take lightly. And I think that's what I can understand if you say well, there's only been 10 deaths or 20 deaths or 50 deaths. Just remember, two weeks ago, we were talking about almost no cases in the United States. And now that we're testing for it and watching the spread as it's unfolding, uh, those numbers going up astronomically. Three weeks ago, Italy was just living life just fine. Now they're literally in a virtual shutdown in the northern parts of Italy. And that's the challenge. And I re remind people this just... So let's go play on a loop there. Um, so, you know, this was as of March 9th, I think. March 9th or 10th that they recorded this. Uh, and so much has changed since then. And so, yeah, this is, I mean, I, <laughs> I know that some of you guys are preaching to the choir here, but yeah, it's, it's, this is something that takes seriously. Um, some of the precautions that we're taking here at home is, you know, obviously we, you know, we go to, we go to Costco. So we just actually happen to have 60 fucking rolls of toilet paper. So thankfully we have that. Um, 
I was able to find rice. You know, rice is something big. You know, maybe you guys don't live in an area that that rice is, you know, uh, it's going to fly off the fucking you know, shelves. Rice is a great, a fantastic food that you can keep basically for years and still be good. Um, and it's very easy to cook. Boiling water with the lid and then boom, rice. Mix some shit in there if you want, right? If you want. Or just eat white rice. It's good. Just slap an egg on it. A little bit of sriracha. That's breakfast. That's how that works. Um, you're still going to have clean water. Right now, Right now, I'm not really worried about water supplies right now. Uh, spam. I have, yeah, I have spam too. <laughs> of course I do. Uh, the only precautions humanity can take is to stock up on supplies and literally don't leave your house. If you leave your house, you can get affected. That's true. I mean, that's true. You know, there's, there's some things that you have to... Uh, you have to leave your house for like we're we're planning a Costco trip. I mean, I, I, I'm gonna wear gloves. Like seriously, we're gonna wear gloves. We have one mask. We happen to have one mask in the house. N95. Um, now let's talk about masks. Uh, the uh, CDC recommends that only people that are affected by the uh, virus to use the mask, right? The who are showing symptoms. And I agree with the CDC's assessment on that, but they're doing it for an econ economic reasons. They're saying this because they want to make sure that. Uh, and yes, beige, I'm going to go alone. Um, I, th they want to make sure that there are masks available for people who actually need them. Because as we've seen, you can't really find them anywhere. But that it will, it, I mean, it will stop. I mean, if, if I'm wearing a mask and then somebody like sneezes in my general direction, right? Then hopefully it prevents me from breathing in whatever it is that they sneezed out. So it's like, it's more useful for people who are wearing, if that person was wearing a mask, like the CDC said, Right. Then I wouldn't have to worry about that. But you see how this works. People are walking around that don't have masks. I had one from when I painted a fucking uh, uh, my mailbox like six months ago. Uh, it's an it's N95 like paint mask. It's, it's you know, it's wired. So it's not going to save my life in case of a chemical attack or anything, but it might stop somebody else's spit from entering my mouth. Oh, and that's kind of the point. Boots. Thank you so much, sir. Um, and yes, Krell, that's a very good point. We all have to worry about people who can't police themselves and not sneeze in someone's face. You get infected through your eyes, so practice closing that shit. Oh, absolutely. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's something to worry about. It is absolutely something to worry about. Um, other, other precautions that we're taking, we have, a, uh, we have a couple cans of Lysol that we just happen to have around the house. Uh, we have bleach. You know, like, these are all things. That, think about what you have in terms of disinfectants. When I came home today, when I came home today, um, I... I, you know, I rode BART public transportation, not the cleanest form of public transportation, right? Think like a subway system, right? Uh, there. And I wore, I didn't bring a change of clothes, right? So I wore the same clothes there. I did a photo shoot with Lindsay and it was, photo shoot went okay. It was weird because, you know, we stopped to watch the Trump address and all that stuff. And so it's a very awkward time to be like taking pictures of titties, right? This is weird, right? Um, and then today, uh, you know, I packed everything up and I came home in the same clothes that I went in. So my clothes basically just drenched in whatever the fuck is on BART. Urine, spit, slobber, boogers, fucking whatever, food. Um, when I got home, I went to the garage and you could go into like onto your porch or your balcony or whatever, maybe not. Okay, we'll be backyard something. Um, and I, uh, I took the Lysol can, I sprayed my bags, left my bags out there. Uh, and I, um, I took off all my clothes. <laughs> And then I walked into the house naked, just just for Jen. Um, and but I did it. I did it on purpose because you know I, I took all the clothes off and I threw it in the wash, like directly into the washer, because I don't want to have um, you know I don't want to bring anything from Bart into the house. Uh, and so put it in the washer, hot clothes wash, yes. Uh, and everything else I spray with Lysol, and I took my um, I took some of those uh, uh, Clorox cleaner cleaning things which you could replicate using a little bit of bleach and, and you know dilute the bleach and put it uh, uh, on like a rag or something uh try not to breathe it and uh you could use that as kind of a you know a temporary disinfectant if you absolutely need to um if you have chlorine i mean obviously read up on what you should be touching with chlorine and what you should be mixing with okay but chlorine is technically a disinfectant uh i have a bottle of chlorine liquid chlorine out on the uh, on the side of the house and you know if if i run out of disinfectant in the house i'm gonna go dilute that shit and uh and i'm gonna use that to to wipe things down um yes and use gloves yeah use gloves latex gloves that thank you that's another thing you know we happen we again shop at costco we happen to have a ton of of uh, gloves because you can't buy just 10 
we have 200. So yes, wear gloves. Yeah, do not mix anything. Anything that I'm telling you guys about to use as like a temporary measure for a disinfectant or anything, do not mix any of that stuff, okay? Please don't. Don't be dumb. Um, what else are we doing? Uh, let's see. Disinfectants. Yeah, just disinfecting things we're bringing into the house. Uh, I already went through all the common areas and, and wiped things down with disinfectants. Just to, you know, how are you with disinfectants that Declan can use himself? So, I mean, Declan is not, um, you know, he's not, he's not going to, tonight we're going to have a more serious discussion with him and let him know. Because we told him, was like, yeah, people are getting sick more often, so we have to be more, you know, we have to be careful and start cleaning and everything. Um, we had a little bit of a scare with Jen. She had an um, elevated uh, uh, fever on top of some allergies. She just suffered a little bit of allergies, sniffly nose, congestion, everything. Um, and, you know... With all, with all the anxiety and everything that's going on, it's very easy to for your brain to just like take things that you would normally shrug off and then turn it into something um, that feels very real. Uh, and it's it's okay if you feel that way. Like if you feel like your 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 anxiety is building up and and it's kind of taken over and everything, like just know that it's like you know there's nothing you could do about it. You just have to like work your way through it. Lay down, try to take a nap, go outside, soak up the sun, but don't go in public. Um, and just know that, you know, as long as you are taking care of yourself, all you could do is control your local environment. And that's what I'm doing here in this house. I'm controlling my local environment. I got rid of my mother-in-law. <laughs> I'll, sh I'll show you guys how to do it later. <laughs> no, I told her to leave. So she's not in this house, um, bringing, you know, being susceptible to these germs. Um, you know, I, I, I've started disconnect, uh, disinfecting, you know, oh, you need some plastic bags. <laughs> uh, I started disinfecting common areas. So like the banister, you know, for the stairs, the doorknobs, um, the sink, like this, the faucet sinks, right? Just think about everything. Just walk around, walk around with a rag, like, you know, a rag with some disinfectant on it or some Lysol or whatever. Uh, and just pay attention to things that you just touch that you don't even think about. You just touch, right? I disinfected this because I use it all the time, right? And so, of course, I had disinfected it. I touch it all the time. Uh, I have actually not disinfected my microphone, but I'm the only one that uses it. So if I have, <laughs> if I have COVID-19, then, uh, well, <laughs> that's where it's going to live. Uh, but I would not recommend that any of you touch this microphone. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's, you know, this is, uh, mics are always disgusting. I know, I try to rotate this thing every once in a while just to kind of keep it fresh, you know? <laughs> When it starts to get muffled sounding, I'm like, hmm, is that spit or is that just my ears playing tricks on me? Uh, so let me see. Let me see what else I have here because I, I have a lot. <laughs> we know that uh, Major League Baseball is shut down. I might even show you guys the articles because it's just too many to go through. But Major League Baseball, done uh, for two weeks. Uh, NBA, done for the season. Uh, I think the Warriors were the only ones that are technically eliminated for, from uh, contention for uh, uh, for the for the whatever. Um, for 2020 year, which is hilarious. Fucking Warriors. Um, let me see. Uh, do we have anything on NFL yet? I don't think we have anything on NFL, but the NFL is still like a ways out. Uh, so I don't think I have to worry about that. Uh, NHL. NHL is uh, suspending games. Uh, NASCAR. NASCAR is suspending spectators. So oh, NH NHL's out. Yeah, out. Um, uh, what, is, what the hell? Uh, you've heard NFL's out. Well, NFL is is not. This is not. It's not NFL season right now. It's not really football. It's like the pre preseason stuff and like off season stuff maybe. But uh, March Madness is done. Uh, yeah, baseball's out uh, for for a couple weeks. NASCAR, no fans. Uh, IndyCar, no fans. Um, in the state of California, you have no gatherings over two hundred fifty. So it's like basically every Walmart, pretty much. Uh, let me see. I mean, if we get back into gaming here, uh, the Overwatch League, you know, they pretty much come out and say after careful rev review and working in close collaboration with our teams, we are canceling Overwatch League events scheduled for March and April. You can pretty much expect if there was something you had planned or something that was planned in March and April, you can expect that to, like, that's not going to happen. Like in terms of like an event, right? Any event level thing that's done. Um, this is going to have, you know, I mean, here we go. Yeah. Drink up, even something small. You know, the drink up is uh game dev drink up is, is basically just like they just come to your local town, not local town, but you know, some of the biggest in Manila, San Diego, uh, Seattle, LA, uh, and Montreal, uh, San Francisco, I think has already been canceled because they, they come out of San Francisco or San Jose, I think. Um, and you know, this is just basically just game devs getting together. And I've been to this a couple times. It's kind of cool to go like meet indie devs and everything. Uh, some of your local indie devs, uh, Dota two mage is also canceled. 
Uh, let me see. Um, if we get, I mean, look, just, I'm kind of going on this in order. I mean, what is this one? This one is, uh, yeah, COVID-19 case in, uh, I guess at the Mirage, I guess at the Mirage Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada, the Strip, they have somebody. Uh, let me see. SoCal Gaming Expo. That's closed. What else? Let me see. New Rochelle, which is a town outside of uh, New York City in New York. Uh, that is closed. The town is locked down. Closed. Um, we, what the hell? It's Casper. <laughs> Stay on topic, man. Stay on topic. Let me see. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm trying to go through here and see what else I have. This is so much shit. But just, yeah, just... You know, like I said, just take it seriously. You know, it's something that this is this is a once this is a once in a lifetime thing. Uh, hopefully, that you know, I don't think hardly any of us are gonna experience anything like this. You know, again in our lifetime. Um, what is this? It's 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 is it? No, 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 Casper. I was talking about your first comment. <laughs> um, let me see. I, th I mean, really, I, at this point, I mean, Disneyland's closed, TwitchCon Amsterdam is done, uh, you know, and, and, and you could probably imagine that, you know, BlizzCon is probably being looked at right now. There's a lot of planning that goes into BlizzCon. Um, uh, TwitchCon San Diego is in September. That's probably going to, you know, uh, it's, there's, there's a lot of, SARS is not that long ago, but yeah, but this is like, this is worse. I don't have numbers, but this is uh, worse than SARS, allegedly. Let me go and close this thing. It's so bright. Damn. I spent the uh, last day and a half moving my workstation from the office to home. Yeah, a lot of people are working from home. I mean, so look at, look at, uh, let's look at a convention, right? There's a lot of stuff that happen uh, at, uh, at a single convention, you know? We have the devs, you know, who are going to showcase their new game. Uh, that, they could, some of them could do that online, Sony, Microsoft, you know, bigger companies that could do that stuff online. They could have, you know, we're just going to stream our keynote and we'll just you know, do it online. Like Nintendo Direct. Nintendo Direct's kind of like, cool, business as usual, we could do this. Um, but there are lots of people that are employed by, like, temporary empl employment. When you go to a convention, you know all those, all those people that are walking around, security, people who work in food services. Uh, even people that work the booths are typically hired for that event and they're trained and then that's it. And then they cover some other event next time they're trained on whatever that is, uh, for the, you know, for the next convention, they don't have work. You know, you look at, um, I mean, you know, if you look, look at cosplayers, you know, a lot of cosplayers make a lot of money, you know, working at a convention doing like dressing up as whatever your favorite character is uh and going that route and they're gonna have to find another form of income for the most part i mean because we don't know when conventions are going to come back and when conventions do start to come back like are people going to feel safe to go um a lot of stuff because of how quickly things are changing you know for the worse right uh and you know what era you jest but that is a very real thing you know like these are people and you know myself included you know i don't thankfully i don't rely and i don't know if this is i mean but i don't necessarily rely on you know a a, a nine to five you know wage your know, job that i can lose because of something like this right i'll lose time i'll lose whatever because of something like this my job is here this is my job uh photography is my job um but there are people who rely on that extra burst of income that they get from going to conventions, uh, you know, making these deals at, you know, random meetings and random, like whatever things that happen at conventions, which this happens all the time. Um, and then now they, they're missing that money. And so they're going to have to find other ways to make money. So yeah, are you going to see more OnlyFans and Patreons popping up for some of your favorite cosplayers? Absolutely. I guarantee it as a matter of fact, because they need money to survive. And this is something, and this is something that some of them may have to look at as a potential form of re a revenue in, in order for them to stay afloat through the rest of this year. Um, it is better than, yeah, it is better than nothing. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> unless the delivery guy is wearing good gloves and stuff. Yeah, you still catch it. Um, think about working in a restaurant or other uh, food service jobs that happens to them if no one's going out. Yeah, that's, I was actually, so last night, 
I was uh, uh, I was talking to some of the staff at I was staying at a hotel called Hotel Majestic in San Francisco, and it's a small like boutique hotel, uh, very fancy, right? But very lo- like minimal staff for the most part. It's kind of like yeah. So it, I went outside and I was talking to some of the staff. They're outside on a smoke break, and um, you know, I went, just kind of talking to him about you. Just are you guys have you guys noticed a significant decrease in uh, you know in, in in tenants you know coming and staying here? And guests and he's and they were like yeah like it's it's a it's a big deal um and even when i was there there was only I mean, it was not very busy you know there was not a lot of people there the bar was dead um you know it's not a very big place to begin with but still like you typically hear something you know like they just i just didn't hear anything there's just nobody staying at this hotel um it's something that yeah it, it, it's gonna have an impact on any service industry because the more people get to the point to where they're afraid to go outside, uh, afraid to go to a public place for like leisure, okay? Like when I say service industry, I would say the markets will be the last one touched. But food service places, restaurants, um, bars, stuff like that. And Casper is here. Casper could probably speak to some of this as well. Casper is a chef. He's a very good chef, as a matter of fact. Uh, you know, Casper knows firsthand uh, what it, what it's like. He works in, uh, can I disclose where you work? Or not gen- like, uh, generally where you work, Casper. I don't want to like just say it, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's something that is going to have an economic impact further than just, you know, my 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 stocks portfolio yesterday or tomorrow and the next day um it's going to be it's going to have a lasting impact uh for a lot of folks people that are living paycheck to paycheck that they can't you know they can't survive without that extra job or the extra you know income that's coming in and then they have to turn to what like what where are we going to get the money to pay for it (laughs) i say that and i laugh because of the four trillion dollars that uh that we just threw at uh at the markets but whatever um (laughs) <laughs> I work at liquor distribution. A boy business went down with the St. Patrick's Day around the corner, which is weird, right? Because fucking St. Patrick's Day. That's when alcohol sells. That's wait, when is when is that's next Tuesday? As a matter of fact, yeah. Uh, nearly all, nearly all cinemas and DK in uh, DK are closed for the next two weeks. I work watch repair. It was hella dead before this. Now we might fold. <sighs> yeah, yeah i feel for you guys no i do i really do this is not uh yeah it took me a second to realize this denmark but uh <laughs> i was like what state is that <laughs> um no but yeah it's it this it's gonna have a lasting impact i hope that wherever you guys are whatever country you live in uh i hope that there's some kind of assistance for you that there's somebody i mean you look like mark cuban mark cuban's trying to put together a plan for people that are hourly waged workers uh for you know, for various games in his, in his, uh, you know, basically within his uh, sphere of influence. And he's trying to put together a plan to support those people while they're not able to work. Because if there's no NBA games, there's no concession stands, there's no, uh, nobody serving liquor. There's nobody cleaning the state, cleaning the area. Like all that stuff is just stopped. And so, you know, hopefully there's more people, like hopefully there's enough Mark Cubans out there to like sit down and be like, Hey, we need to like organize something within our community to help to help them um yeah you know we have people like jeff bezos we have people like mark zuckerberg you know and we have people like fucking tim apple <laughs> who have basically endless reserves of cash and money they've made uh that they can may maybe maybe instead of paying taxes they can use some of that those funds to help support their local communities you know because what they know this but those communities that they need to, that that need their help are the ones that have been paying their paycheck for how long right they're not going to be ordering anything off of amazon they're not going to be you know buying facebook ads for their startup that they you know they're wanted because they're not going to be doing any startups um they're not going to be spending money and so there needs to be something in place in order to help them just at least get by so that way they could get back to spending money on their products and services. Uh, and so this is <laughs> this is the part where we have to rely on the 1% to save us. Otherwise, you know, this economy is going to get worse and fucking worse. Uh, 790 cases in Norway now, 10 more and we have 800. That's that's the way that math works. <laughs> yes, that is a lot. Um that's a lot. Even barbers and hairdressers are closed there. Yeah, in in Italy, uh, as of 
Monday, which is probably different now because everything's changing hour to hour to hour. In Italy, barber shops, you can only have one person in there getting a haircut with one barber. And that's it. Uh, shops, only one person can go in a shop at a time. Um, there's so many rules that they have in place now where you cannot have people congregating in small, you know, these small stores and shops and everything. And it's, uh, and yeah, I mean, it's going to stop people from going. I mean, like, why, why am I going to go get a haircut right now? Like, why would I buy, I'm, I'm going to get a haircut because I'm going to, but there's a lot of people who are going to say, fuck a haircut. I'm going to save this money for the end of the world. Uh, and they're going to hoard that money. And I, I don't know if saving your money is going to have any, have any impact when money is going to be, you know, if, 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 if things go that bad, you know, that badly and that poorly, money's not going to really mean anything. Uh, but, but still, um, uh, here's a link. Here's a link to live updates from the whole world. Let me see. What is this? Let me see. Let me get over here. Grab this from you. Uh, actually, Italy is on is on a total lockdown now. Uh, it's on total on total lockdown. They're outside fine two hundred eighty euros. Wow. Okay, so they did step it up. Um, pay for your daily well, your daily insurance company. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's it's very specific. I mean, you know, everybody's got different insurance companies. Some people don't have any insurance. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be rough times for some folks. It's gonna be rough times. Uh, if things go that bad, money means nothing. We're in a new world order at this point. Uh, let me see. What is this? So deaths, 4,970. Oh, yeah. I, I have another site that I was looking at for this um, that has dark mode. <laughs> uh, this one's a little bit bright for me. <sighs> yeah. Um, let me find my other site here. Jesus. <laughs> Uh, let me see. COVID-19. Got it. This is the site. I showed you guys this site probably like, what, a month ago now, right? I don't know what the numbers were a month ago, but I'm fairly certain it was somewhere in the 50,000 range, 40,000 range. Whenever we did news, I showed you guys this site and it was, um, you know, it was nowhere near as bad as it is now. Actually, where are the, where are the circles? I guess they're not popular. Yeah, fuck it. It's just everywhere. Uh, <laughs> gee, uh, there we go. Okay. Well, I guess it was an update later, but... Yeah, it's, it's, did I click on, let me see. Sometimes if you, you know, if you click on a, on a country, it'll isolate those, but yeah, it seems, I, I, yeah, Iran is, is hit hard. Italy's hit hard. South Korea is hit hard, uh, but recovering, I feel like. France, um, zoom in more. You used to be able to see it like this, actually, but I guess, yeah, it's got to the point where, yeah, I was zoom out here to see the whole thing. There you go. Well, it's just Asia. There you go. The Chinese coronavirus. Don't call it that. Don't fucking call it that. Uh, only, only certain kinds of people in the U.S. call it that. I don't think anybody else in the world is that stupid. Uh, so it was just working. Yeah, I got, a, I got a broken one. Let me refresh it real quick. I mean, yes, see a couple of exclamation marks all over the place. Dummies, big dummies. Oh, here we go. Yeah, this looks like it's popular a bit more. This, this site's probably getting hammered right now, honestly. So yeah, I don't think we're gonna get any information off this thing right now. You can see these exclamation marks all over the place. Um, yeah, it's getting blown up. Blowed up. Uh, South Korea apparently has under control. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's still, I mean, like, what is their, what is their death count? 66. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. But also rem remember how small, rem remember how small South Korea is. South Korea is basically the size of like, you know, Oregon or something. Like it's not a very, very large country in landmass. Uh, high density, very high density. But if, you know, if, if, if I, I would say that you know, most Asian cultures are already prone to throwing on the mask whenever, you know, basic sometimes all the time. Uh, so it's already kind of in their culture to be more proactive about this, this kind of thing. Uh, looking at, you know, I mean, looking, I don't know about other countries, but the United States, the United States has a lot of boneheaded ass people here, uh, a lot. About 53 million to be exact. Uh, and it's sometimes it takes a lot more to, you know, it takes like a Tom Hanks to convince them that this is a real problem. Uh, it takes something serious to, to, to get through to those folks and let them know that, hey, maybe you should be a little bit more careful. Maybe you shouldn't like, you know, just playfully rub a microphone and then, you know, go around and like touch all your teammates and everything being funny about it. That guy was French, by the way. So, it's, but still, he was in the U.S. So I count him as a U.S. See what happens? We bring, we 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 curate that kind of shit. We bring we bring them over, and they get dumb. 
That's <laughs> what we do, man. Um, uh, some folks you'll never get to. Yeah. Uh, Asian cultures know not to be stupid when it comes to illness. For reals. No, it's true. It's true. <sighs> hmm. Uh, Italy was supposed to be on quarantine by the government and the people went out into the streets and parks giving no fucks. Now look at them. Exactly. Yeah. You can't be cocky about this stuff, man. You can't be cocky. This is the kind of shit that, you know, you, you talk shit and you, <laughs> it's going to bite you in the ass, man. Karma. Karma's rough. Look at Matt Gates. Matt Gates. he's a, a congressman representative and he, he thought it'd be funny to play down the, play down the you know, the, 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 the whole pandemic thing. Well, before it was labeled a pandemic and he wore, he wore a gas mask, uh, to like, to meetings or whatever the fuck, uh, to a session. Thought he was being funny. And then look at his ass. He's in fucking quarantine now because he's got it. Yeah, exactly. You're talk shit, get hit. Don't do it. Don't do it. Take it seriously. You know, like <laughs> take it seriously. Uh, I won't buy in hysteria. Assholes not understanding how pandemics work and making it all the way worse. Yeah. Uh, Ted Cruz self-imposed quarantine. Yep. I got my immune system. Exactly. Yeah. It's not about you. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about the people around you. It's about the people around you who rely on you not being a fucking idiot. Okay. <laughs> and I know that I'm preaching to the choir here because none of you guys, none of you guys are that dumb. I know it. I know it. I know there's basically nobody here who's just like, this ain't a big deal. But, except for Top. Uh, but, but you know somebody. You know somebody who's still on the fence. Who's just kind of like, ah, I mean, even my own father. Bless, bless his heart. He said, you notice how these things happen around election years? And I'm just like, dad. <laughs> Move, but by the end of the conversation, I had him straight, though. At the end of the conversation, I had him straight. Super Pod, thank you so much. 22 months, thank you. Two months away from two, two years. It's got to be a very different time in two months. Um, it's okay, I'll just go to the farm and hide. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he is right away. Because you know why? Because this shit happens every year. <laughs> every year. 1878, 1918. That's right, the big epidemics. Uh... I think I could convince my dad. I don't think I could convince my dad of anything. It's tough. You know, it's tough. It's it's hard. I mean, like, I try to imagine, like, Declan trying to convince me of something, right, that I feel like I'm the authority of, and maybe I might be a little bit... I mean, honestly, I don't know. I feel like I'm pretty open-minded, and, like, you know, I trust if he's telling me something that, you know, I might believe him, but I don't know, man. Here in about 20 years, when he's old enough to start telling me shit, and I need to start listening, I might be a curmud curmudgeon-ass old man. You know, I'll be pushing 60. I might just be like, get out of here, kid. <laughs> it will, <laughs> Daddy will not donkey, trust me. Exactly. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. Kid, get out of here. Uh, camera the woods without electricity or running water has never been more appealing for a long time accommodation. Let me tell you, I have my camper outside. I am like really, 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 really looking at it as like, what would I, what would I have to do to make this thing livable for two weeks? Hmm, what do I have to do to make this thing work for two weeks? Uh, hey, here's a tip. Here's a tip. Go buy a bidet. They're not that expensive, okay? Go buy a bidet. They're not that expensive, and they're very easy to hook up. They hook right up to the same line that comes out. You know when you look out behind your toilet, and you have a, uh, and, and you have like a little, like a little hose that kind of comes out, right? Just take that out. Boop. I'm going to install mine this weekend. Uh, and it will, a bidet. It's basically like a water hose that sits underneath your, about points up at your butthole. So whenever you, you know, whenever you take a, a shit, you turn, you, you turn it on and spray water in your butt. I have not used one before, but I, I will. I will. Um, they don't all shoot warm water, unfortunately. <laughs> but yeah, I heard that. I hear, I hear they take, uh, they take some getting used to, but I, uh, yeah, I, there's a shortage of toilet paper, man. So don't use it. Use, take a rag and have one rag per person in, the, in your household, right? Um, one rag will be, and that rag will be after you're done using the bidet, then you could mop up your butt cheeks. 
And that's how you do it. That, that's how you do it. You can just hop in the shower too. There's nothing wrong with hopping in the shower. You could shit in the shower if you wanted to. Just remove the grill though, because you don't want the sh- push the shit get stuck in there. You don't want to push it through. Um, that's Satan's gamble right there. The first bidet before knowing if it's hot or cold. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, cabinet full of toilet paper. This guy. This guy. Smash it through the grates. Waffle stuff. <laughs> that's ex- waffle stuff. Oh, gross. Stamp it down. Wow, you guys have some. Wow. You, I'm, learn- I'm learning a whole lot about you guys right now. What the fuck? Everybody's like, nah, nah, you just gotta stamp it down. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Friend told me. <laughs> oh, man. Ah, half of chat shits in the shower. Exactly. <laughs> oh, God. You guys are like my dupes. <laughs> Wait a minute. This was just showers hooked up here. Why is there all of a sudden all this extra waste? More waste than I put into the like, water, like clean water that I put into the system. What the fuck? <laughs> it's like, oh, they're shitting in the shower. Awesome. Oh, God. Just stamp it down. Uh, little we know this is actually I include all along. This is, I'm living in a simulation, an actual simulation right now. <laughs> let me check. Uh, let me check Twitter. I was, I, you know, a lot has probably changed just since we started the stream. Now, what, fifty five minutes ago? Let me just kind of go through and see. Uh, we know that Disneyland closed. You know, uh, Governor Newsom, Gavin Newsom, the, our governor, he he said that no, it was it like two days ago. He said no gatherings over a thousand, and that killed the NBA. Right? Or maybe it was yesterday. Uh, he updated it today to 250, no more than 250 people uh, per t- to a gathering. And that basically killed everything else, except for Disneyland. He made an exception for Disneyland because capitalism. Um, Disneyland made the call to actually shut down the, uh, 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 to, to shut down operation for the foreseeable future. We don't know how long, but... I mean, that's a, that's a place. Let me see. Uh, I so said, that's, that's a place that's, that's, you're going to get germs exchanging hands for sure. Let me see. I mean, yeah, all expense, all, all expense. Hey, uh, anybody that watches soccer, uh, football, is that, what is going on with that? Like, that's the biggest sport in the world. Like what is, what is, what is their call? I know that was a series A or whatever it is. I don't know what series A is. Is that just like a division of soccer? Hopefully somebody that watches this. And also rugby. If anybody watches rugby or cricket. I know cricket's maybe more like in, in Indian. Uh, empty stadium play. Soccer in the Netherlands canceled both pro and amateur. Soccer without crowds. Closed stadiums play without attending fans. Wild. 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 That was two days ago. Uh, Syria is a big, the biggest division in Italy. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, it's it, okay. Well, Italy it makes a lot of sense too. A lot of leagues are canceled, and other leagues are playing without people watching. Syria A, uh, Champions League is shutting down. The crowds are just gathering outside the stadiums. Oh fuck! La Liga is still going. Internationals are being canceled. Domestic being played behind closed door. Closed doors. Yeah. Let me uh, let me see. Let me just kind of go through my March sadness is trending. Uh. Broadway's closed. That's right. Broadway. So, like, basically, no Broadway plays are happening. International being canceled. Domestic being played. Uh, FIA has made an announcement yet. Unless I saw. Yeah, you know, IndyCar uh, said no fans. NASCAR said no fans. So, I I would assume that that uh, FIA, F1, like, uh, basically every racing event will probably follow that same guideline. No fans. Um. You know how much money we lost without March Madness? Oh man, just just as a whole, the amount of money that's going to be lost across everything is going to be enormous. Um, n- these are numbers that we'll never see again, uh, barring like you know worldwide economic collapse, which is essentially what is going to happen uh, with this, like. We're not going to see this kind of thing again. Um, the amount of money that, that, that's being lost through hey. advertising, through new... F- oh, hey, what up? Welcome back, dude. Oh, extended. Okay, through April. Oh, wow. Okay, I was going to say, I was like, wait a minute. Uh, well, shit, man. You could do that? <laughs> I'm like, look, it's like, you can do that? Uh, that's a new thing for me. Thank you, nobody. War. Uh, the economy crashes worldwide, then all economies remain the same, and everything works out to, to, in the end. Boom, baby. Siren, 
One year hype. Do you think we would be where we are right now one, one year ago? My mom came back from London last night. Apparently, there were like 10 people on her plane. Yeah, so uh, Trump made the announcement last night that he was shutting down all travel from uh, from the EU except for the UK. But that wasn't entirely true. Uh, the actual policy says that anybody who's traveled to any number of the listed countries below, which is basically all of the EU... Uh, within the last 14 days cannot travel to the U.S. Because the first thing people are like, well, then I'll just take a three-hour trip on train to the U.K. and I'll fly back from Heathrow. Um, well, that's not, that's not possible because the actual policy does indeed state that you cannot travel from the U.K. to the U.S. Uh, if you visited any of those countries within the previous 14 days. Uh, now, I don't know I, I, I've never been to, the, to to Europe, so I don't know how it works. I know that when we travel internationally here uh, or in, to anywhere internationally, you, you have a passport and they stamp it and everything. That's what they kind of track where you've been. I don't know how that works in the EU because it is the European Union. I don't know if they act like states. Like we're here with a bunch of states. We could just drive between the states. And like if someone said, well, you couldn't have visited Oregon in the past two weeks. It's like, you can't fucking prove that I've been to Oregon like ever. <laughs> Because I don't have to stamp anything to get there. Uh, EU has hey. open borders. There we go. Oh, Inferno. Thank you so much. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Graffiti Land, Philemon, Takeshio, Crispy, River on Unite. Wow, there's a lot of fucking names here. Jay Canuck. Thank you so much. Um, I missed some of this text. Let me go back real quick. Thank you, Inferno. Appreciate that. Let me see. Is the UK still part of the EU? <laughs> so now if someone from Europe wants to come to America, they need a connection through England. That's right. They need to be able to hang out somewhere in England for two weeks and before they come down. So they, they will get, say, in the EU, you do need transport to travel to other countries inside the EU, but the, they're not checked at the border. Got it. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Italian here. Uh, with Shenzhen, you don't have to file any papers to go around. Okay. Got to take your Appreciate it. Doc, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Um, I, I greatly appreciate that. And then Rova. Oh, hey. For fun. Name. Appreciate that. Rip Disneyland. That's right. Disneyland's done. Disneyland is done for the foreseeable future. I'd imagine Disney World is next. I actually just sent a text to, uh, uh, I know a Disney princess at Disney World. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I reached out to her and uh, just let her know that Disneyland uh, is closed. And uh, she should probably you know look out for you know whether or not uh, it's going to have an impact on Disney World. So Disney World is pretty significant in size. It's also in Florida. And uh, Florida is notorious for having a solid percentage of boneheaded folks so i don't know if they necessarily bought into the fact that uh that you know this is a very serious pandemic that we should take seriously uh or not but we'll see victor thank you so much for keeping the hype train going appreciate that go oh, and titley my favorite titley 34 my oh you guys push that shit right over the edge happy brother happy brother I spoke to my brother earlier who's this not my actual brother right uh <laughs> heinz flores thank you so much who's your daddy uh, it's Snow White, you guys come. <laughs> well, mine is, uh, my friend is, uh, she's Pocahontas and, uh, and, uh, Jasmine. She plays both because she's just that, oh. she's, she's just that kind of brown. She just plays anything. It's hilarious how that works over there. Uh, yeah, NHL is this, wait, did, did they do the season? Did they do the season? Because last we checked, it was, hi, thank you again. Ding. Las Vegas. I've been keeping track of Las Vegas news, like, constantly because Las Vegas is another, you know, tourist destination. It's a service industry. Uh, it's it, almost every person in Vegas has a job or has had a job in the service industry. Whether you're working at, you know, a casino. I have. I've obviously, I, I live there. I've had a number of jobs that were um, casino related. Uh, and, you know, once, once casinos get to the point to where, for example, card games, where you're constantly handing around cards and there's hundreds of people in this tiny little like showroom floor uh in the pits basically doing all their stuff like that's there's handing around germs and everything hi thank you so much for that appreciate it rex flux razor scrints uh scowling arc appreciate that uh it's suspended from the official twitter yeah that's right we had talked about that earlier yeah uh, uh red war machine say this for a scam <laughs> for a scam hype train thank you got the hype train man Give me some donkey, some not donkey, but a unicorn butt. Uh, just taking a pause. That's right. Follow the sport. That's right. Strip clubs. Strip clubs. That's 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 another very real thing. Like 
strip clubs are are a place where you have close contact with somebody who has close contact with a number of other folks you know it's it's a place that's gonna take a significant hit it's not the same as like a bar or something where it's like hey well you know what i could still go get a drink and whatever and it's just the bartender you know it, it's it's different you know lots of skin lots of sweat uh getting getting handed around um maybe now dudes won't want to touch <laughs> <laughs> but you know they're gonna get hit as well so you know you know yeah we talked we joked about only fans earlier today but they that yeah sites like only fans site like patreon site like you know sites where uh, uh many vids or whatever like all these you know more adult oriented uh crowdfunding sites i hate to lump patreon in there but really um you know these are all uh going to blow up you know, you're going to see, like I said, you can see a lot of people. I mean, shit, I got fucking OnlyFans, but I started that before coronavirus, though. Hey, Anonymous Cheer, thank you so much. Uh, great time to buy stocks. Um, Chatterbait, MFC, Twitch. It's, it's, it's going to be a lot. You know, there's, as like I said, strip clubs going to be shutting down. Cosplayers who can't go to, uh, can't go to conventions to get paid. They're going to be looking for other work. Uh, models in general who maybe can't travel. Right. I mean, there is there. I can't stress to you how huge the industry is in terms of traveling models, like models who just travel to like random cities and states just to get modeling gigs or whatever. That's going to basically die off because who's the who the fuck's going to want to fly, you know? So the same way that so many of us and so many people that maybe, you know, have. Uh, been basically relegated to work from home status for the foreseeable future. You know, these, these service industry folks, they don't really have that same, you know, the same benefit. How is a stripper going to work from home? It's going to have, that's going to, that's going to be an only fans thing, right? Uh, how is a cosplayer going to work from home? Right. The one that goes to shows and does all these events like MC, uh, MC Bordenaise, Bord 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 I think is her name. Right. Uh, she's a huge, she builds these crazy machines and everything that she does for cosplay events for, for conventions. You know, what is she going to do? Uh, they're going to be looking for crowdfunding sites and everything. So you're, you're going to see a huge uptick in, in crowdfunding sites from everybody. Um, you're going to see. GoFundMe's pop up all over the place. You know, people who are who don't have money, who have low paying jobs, don't have good insurance, and maybe they live in a country uh, that has got like third world rate insurance policies or insurance, health insurance or health care, like the U.S. <laughs> it's yeah, it's um, it's it's going to change a lot. It's going to change a lot. A lot of companies are going to realize. That they can indeed. Oh, I actually did get a unicorn ass. That's so funny. Uh, <laughs> what the hell? That's so funny. Let me share this. Is it, the, is it the butt? Let me share it real quick. Is that the butt? I can't tell. Maybe it is. I can't tell. <laughs> is that the butt? I can't tell. Boy, context, baby. Um, it looks like the butt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It looks like udders. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of you guys who are working from home, your, your companies who previously were like, oh, we're not going to work from home. Now they're probably going to realize, hey, maybe it's not that bad. So don't, if you are working from home, don't fuck it up. Okay? Be, be attentive. Be there during your work time and try, try to, you know, to, to make that work for you because working from home is awesome if you can, if you can handle it. It takes a lot of personal drive a lot of you know you have to you, sometimes you have to motivate yourself to do things it's hard but it's worth it in the end i think you never have to go outside again you could be an introvert in your own house uh i work in retail if i'm not in work i can't be working yeah that's um yeah that's that's gonna be rough you know like i said you know the service industry industry is gonna be the first one to go right Anybody who's working at any convention hall, or anybody that's working in a casino, uh, anyone that's working in just strip clubs, anything that is a service-related industry, that's going to be probably one of the first things to go. Um, 
the one of the biggest scares, and this is again, I mentioned this at the beginning, but it's worth mentioning again. Boom, one of the biggest things, Domina, thank you so much. Dominus to Dominius, Jesus Christ. Uh I'm just dropping this up here. Now I'm out catching up on the Vony Vods again. Bye. Bye. Oh, by the way, Dominius, before you leave, uh, I did skip a whole bunch because I worked on that save, the uh CVC, the the creamy vanilla center. I worked on that one offline. So that's why you saw a difference there. I couldn't respond. I was, I was on a train and everything, so I couldn't respond then. But that's why I did work on that one offline and it came back and then I didn't update. Okay, cool. You got it. Just making sure. I know you appreciate the Oni content. I appreciate that you do. So thanks. Um, services, delivery services are going to be, yeah, delivery services, Grubhub, the stuff like that is going to take, take a hit as well. The, the scariest thing, uh, and this is the reason why you have to be proactive about this, is when the medical fields start to uh, uh well let's start here schools are starting to close right starting next monday there's a ton of states maybe even nationwide where those kids are not allowed to go to school so they got to stay home those kids belong to those kids have parents that have any number of jobs and some of them are going to be in the medical profession the medical profession is probably the most important one that we absolutely need to keep afloat right now. We need people with any kind of medical background to be able to be ready in case they're needed to actually take care of people who are sick. Uh, if they can't come to work because they have their kid, I mean, it's not exactly a safe place to bring your kid to work day kind of thing when you're working at a hospital chock full of people who have the coronavirus. Uh, it's something that our... Oh, Casper, God damn it. I knew, I knew there'd be one. I said at the beginning of the show there'd be one. Um, but people that are... Uh, it's fucking me. Uh, people that are in the medical field need to be... They absolutely need to be uh, basically alleviated of any kind of at, things that keep them at home because we need them. Uh, hospitals getting overrun are going to be the first... Like, that's going to be the first sign that we're getting into, like you know, shit has hit the fan level because once this, like I said, once the schools or once the, um, uh, once, once the hospitals fill up and we don't have the people to support, then we're going to start looking at other ways we can support folks, but it's going to be rough. And so people are not going to get looked at. And then people who normally would be fine would just, yeah, you know what? I could survive this flu thing. Right. Uh, and they try to fight it and we're going to start seeing the death count go up. Um, don't be surprised if, you know, here in the next couple of months, you know, after schools are closed, <laughs> sometime within the next couple of months after schools are closed, uh, that those schools are going to be basically re, what, patriated, basically re, uh, reconfigured for, you know, to basically house patients. Uh, hotels. Hotels are going to, uh, <laughs> it, well, hotels are probably going to be repurposed for, like, makeshift hospitals. You know, their rooms right? It's, it's, you're going to, you, you, there's potential here that you could actually see a whole lot of change to industries where they're repurposed for the purpose of, uh, helping the sick. Uh, let me catch up on this. Hold on. Sorry. Um, I believe only China was actually prepared to deal with this sudden amount of patients at one time, mainly due to them knowing about this and being very paranoid. The rest of the world be overwhelmed. They also have the ability to lock everybody up and say, you can't leave your house. So, uh, and that's something that does not, I mean, culturally does not work and also government wise doesn't really work in, in a lot of countries. I'd argue transport is the same level as the medical profession. Too many days without food deliveries and we start raiding our neighbors. That's true. That is true. Yeah. No, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, I, I would say, I would say the first one is the health, but yeah, I mean, there's things start, it's cascading, right? Like things start to fall apart and you know, eventually you get to the point to where, you know, uh, where services that are previously, it's kind of, we just took for granted are now all of a sudden essentials. Uh, the UK is still attempting to recover from its overload hospital situation from the winters, so a shit situation made worse. Yeah, you're, wow. Uh, this is some end of the world talk right here. Yeah, it's... I know it sounds like end of the world talk. I know that for the... I, I, I have definitely been... Uh, you know, me personally here at the house, I have definitely been following this thing with the intent that you know, this can blow up and this could be a thing. We talked about it on, you know, on, um, on previous news shows. We talked about it on streams. Uh, I've definitely, I feel, I felt like I did feel like for a while that maybe I was, maybe I was over preparing. Like maybe when I would, I went out early 
you know, on a weekday morning and I went to like all the different Asian markets looking for rice. I thought for a moment, it's like, maybe I'm, maybe I am overreacting, but, uh, I don't feel like that anymore. I actually feel better now because before it was all the anxiety of like, oh my God, am I, what, do I look like a huge asshole? Like, what am I fucking doing? But now I don't feel that way anymore <laughs> because now shit has hit the fan. Um, and I'm glad that I was overprepared and that's why I am, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to, you know, tell you guys what I did to prepare because the, a lot of you guys probably live in areas where you can go out and buy some of this stuff. Go buy yourself a bidet. Don't fucking worry about toilet paper. Buy a bidet. Okay. Uh, you know, get your hands on some bleach on Clorox, uh, wipes on Lysol, stuff like that. It, you're not going to find masks. So just forget about it. Don't worry about masks. You could take a t-shirt or something. It's not going to save your life, but it might stop a spit particle from falling into your mouth. Maybe something that you you want to look forward to, a gator, scarf, stuff like that. Uh, they didn't think you were an asshole. They just thought you looked, you really like rice. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Um, no matter where you live, there are natural disasters that prepare for something uh, going wrong. It's crazy. Yeah. And you know what? That was, I, that's what I told myself. I was like, you know what? We don't have a, we don't have an earthquake kit. We don't have earthquake kits. So maybe, maybe this is just, that's what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this earthquake prep. That's what I'm going to do. Um, but it was a little bit more than that. Now, uh, <laughs> there you go, Paige. Thank you so much. Um, I have a friend. Her name is Katrina. Um, oh my God. It's, yeah. Uh, so she actually lived through, uh, hurricane Katrina, uh, when she was down in, in the South. And she also lived through whatever the Florida one was hurricane Andrew, I think, or whatever. Basically, both of those. She was in both those places. She travels a lot. She has she works for like Starbucks, something like that. She services uh, things that she ends up getting stuck places where there's apparently world, you know, ending disasters. Anyways, she she told me about how she was in New Orleans and she um she was basically stuck because you know the hurricane came through and all of you know basically everything was flooded. She says she was on the second floor of a bar and. The bar, I mean, the bar, the, the bartender, I mean, the bartender, but the bar owner and everything, everyone just stayed there, right? It came through. It was like people were there just drinking because like, oh, yeah, whatever. It's another hurricane. And then they were stuck. They're actually stuck there for like several days. And she said that what she learned from there, she took with her to like Hurricane Andrew. It's like whenever big shit starts to hit the fan and re general resources are gone, alcohol becomes your best bargaining chip so yes alcohol and i and i, I believe her 100 percent. alcohol and probably bottled water but alcohol is something that you can absolutely use as a bargaining chip for like let's say toilet paper or rice or something else that you might need uh because the governments should you know, well, this, this, uh, this is more of a localized thing, right? Obviously when we're talking about nationwide. We're not going to get the same level of support as say just new Orleans during a disaster. Uh, but at the time, you know, the government was doing drops and they were shipping in general resources, some basic food, uh, some like, you know, basic supplies, but what they weren't doing was giving everybody alcohol. And so they ended up being the the trade place for alcohol it was like fucking fallout yes it was basically like fallout she told me the story and i just could not fucking believe it i mean i've known her since the military and i i, I know that's true uh but it's just crazy uh, i'm covered in that department it's got five cases of beers and four boxes of white and red wine not to mention all the spirits i already have uh let me check my messages here hmm <sighs> Thanks, Cogni. Doesn't really fit the theme, though. <laughs> uh, see, times are making toilet shine. So I have plenty of liquor I've only bought uh, to taste and haven't touched. White Claw, all that stuff. I mean, you know what else? You know what else? Weed. Uh, I have a friend who uh, sent me a text and he said um, uh, they got a notice from like you know one of the weed delivery services. And it said that due to high demand some orders are going to be delayed. Um, now, thankfully I have, <laughs> I have a lot because when I buy, I, I it's kind of like Costco, right? I don't want to buy a little bit every time. I'm going to buy a lot at once. 
And I did. I happen. I happen to stock up before all this shit happened. Uh, I'm sure it's probably still available, but you can bet your ass, though, that just like alcohol, marijuana is going to be a pretty good, you know, thing to barter with. Uh, what's the max in Cali? I don't know, but I'm certain I'm probably over it now. <laughs> no, I don't, no, I'm definitely not. But uh, but no, it's I don't know what they have. You can't carry it on your person or whatever is what it is. But uh, um, alcohol kills gins. Oh, for delivery. Oh, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Alcohol kills germs and viruses. Just stay drunk all the time. There you go. Uh, prepping has been just given a bad rep by media the last few decades. Everyone forgets it was a standard way of life for 1900s in West and has been until until now a large part of the world. Yeah. My, my, um, you're either prepared or you died of hunger. Look at Banished. Look at Banished. <laughs> there we go. Banish is a fantastic example. There's a number of other games that do it too, but that's a great example of what do you do to prepare for the winter, right? You have to stock up on supplies. You have to do all this stuff. Like, you know, it, the Banish is a pretty good micro example of of uh, of basic prepping that you should do in the event of blank, right? Here in Northern California, you know, if we had no gas and no water, I mean, water would be rough, honestly. But uh, if we had no electricity, no gas. We could probably get by for a while, especially through the seasons, right? Because it doesn't get that hot here and it doesn't get that cold here. So we'll probably be fine. A couple blankets and take your clothes off. We'll be fine. Um, but in other places, yeah, you, you probably should have like a stock of firewood or something. And let me tell you, firewood goes fast. Firewood goes fast. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, we just, you know, went out and, um, yeah, we, we we go camping now, but not often, but often enough. And burning firewood uh, definitely eats up a lot, a lot. Uh, I would say, you know, stock up some fire, stock up on firewood if you have the room for it, right? Uh, or, you know, get like a small, get like a small propane grill. Uh, propane grill's great. There's propane tanks everywhere. You could probably grab a propane tank and then have it on a small grill like that. It'll last you for days. You're not going to use it as a heating utility. Use it to, like boil water. Uh, use it to uh, you know to cook or something. But uh, propane, propane accessories. Uh, <laughs> yeah, propane's probably going to be one of your ideal places to go in terms of uh, Hank was right. That's right. <laughs> in terms of getting some, uh, uh, you know, being able to maintain you know clean water and all that. Uh, propane tanks will not be refilled, but what I'm saying is that stuff you can stock up on beforehand. And, you know, we have a couple of propane tanks just by virtue of having a camper. And so we have a few, uh, but yeah, I would say, I would say add a propane tank to your, to your mix. It's 25 bucks. It's 25 bucks. And I know that's a lot right now for some of you guys who are looking at potentially, you know, not having a job, but assess your situation. Everybody's situation is different. Assess your situation. Like sit down and think about what do I do if I, one, don't have money, don't have a job, don't have a place to take my, I can't take my kids to school. Uh, I don't have, and, and then start there because that shit's going to happen, right? That's the first thing that's probably going to happen. Uh, and then take it a step further. What do I do when I, one, don't have electricity or two, don't have running water or three, don't have gas or four, don't have food, right? How do I prepare for those things? So like sit down and make a plan for yourself. This is the kind of stuff that I've been doing for the past couple of weeks and just driving myself fucking nuts mentally trying to do it and trying not to stay sane. But I'm glad that I did. And I'm, t I'm encouraging you guys to do the same thing. Uh, tanks are about $50 each for a refill there. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not, again, like assess your situation, right? For me, I, I have no propane. I have, a, I have a propane. I have a small propane, like fireplace, whatever. If I happen, if we happen to get to the point where you don't have running gas in the house, uh, then at least we'll have something. You know what? And you know what else I should probably get? A solar panel. Just one. Just one solar panel. Yeah, what do you do without the internet? You know, that's a very real thing for a lot of people. You know? <laughs> a dab torch in a backup tank, you're good. <laughs> oh god. Um Yeah, internet is that's gonna be that that'll be that would be a problem. You know, if you don't have internet. There's some people you shut your mouth, that's not happening. You're right, it probably won't happen. It probably won't happen. A lot of this stuff probably won't happen. But two weeks ago, that list was much, much bigger. And now we've checked off a quite a number of things because those things have happened. And so now we're really looking at what do I do with my kid that he's not in school? 
Uh, what do I do that I don't have work? You know, like these are very real things that were not a thing two weeks ago. Um, lack of internet is usually not deadly. No, it's not. <laughs> of course, but but getting all your information from the internet is uh, that's a thing. <clears throat> do any of you guys have? Do any of you guys have a, a radio antenna or not radio antenna? But uh, well, first off, you know, do you, any of you guys have a portable radio? Uh, hello, sick person here, but I totally don't have the corona. Oh my god, Corey. I just saw Corey this weekend. How's Brian doing? Is Brian also sick? So yes, uh, we bought a long time ago a solar pa pa solar charged, uh, crank charged, it does both. There's a like crank and solar. Um, and it's just basically a radio. That's all. It has a light on it too. Um, but it's, it's, it's just, we're never going to use it. I hope we never have to use it, but might happen because if the internet doesn't show, doesn't, you know, gets cut off for whatever reason, a lot of us rely on literally all of our communication through internet. Look at us right now, right? Look at Twitter, look at all that stuff. Like I doubt the internet's going to go anywhere. I honestly, honestly don't think the internet's going to go anywhere. I might be saying something different in two weeks. Um, He's mostly over it too. I just load it up on Sudafed and use the neti pot and keep flushing out my nasal passage. Oh, there you go. Good. He's mostly over it. Fantastic. Whatever you guys got, it's probably not the thing then. There you go. Just use the car radio. Yeah, fill up your gas tanks. <laughs> I feel like this is like a doomsday prepper stream, but man, let me tell you, two weeks ago, I would not, I, I, I would have, yeah, I would have thought like, why even go to this level of prep? And I was doing some of this prep because I was being paranoid. Uh, you see, the internet will go anywhere, but our access to it could be severely compromised. There you go. The internet was designed to still work after a nuclear war. So yeah, it's just how you get to it though. That's the thing, you know, whatever your entry way into the internet is, it could just be your local power goes out and then what, um, and by local, I mean like your state, <laughs> I really feel the same, Mike, it's very prepper vibe right now, but this is why it's not entirely dumb. Yeah. How do you feel if you had to fight for others, fight others for supplies? Yeah, exactly. Um, our solar panels so expensive in the U.S. It wouldn't hurt to have some regardless. No, you're right. Uh, I, I've been meaning to get a solar panel for the camper uh, because it's just a nice backup to have. Thankfully, for the time being, uh, I could charge. I could charge things off of you know. And anybody, if you have a truck, if you have a truck, sorry, if you have a vehicle, uh, you can get a converter and you could run things off of your 12 volt, your your you know your a nine volt whatever uh, converter uh, plug. So you can, not everything, I mean, there's a limit to this. You can't just like plug in like the house, <laughs> but you can't, you can at least uh, get something charged, cell phones or whatever off of, uh, off your, your car uh, battery. Let me see. Hold on a second. Ah, soda poppins maids ceased service. The world is ending. <laughs> uh, oh man. Got plenty of guns out there too. I see. Uh, stream started for a second. It begins. See, that's it. Uh, I ever, see. Uh, I want those solar panel tiles that Elon is talking about. We have a lot of people in this area who have solar panels, so I wonder what that's what's gonna happen with that. Like, there's gonna be a lot of folks that are gonna be knocking on those doors. But hey, can I charge my phone? But I don't anticipate. I really do not anticipate losing major utilities. If we get to the point to where major utilities are getting compromised, and think about it, okay. What are the odds that the internet goes down or the power goes out or the gas goes out or whatever, right? Major utility. What are the odds they go down? Probably not. It's a virus. What's going to happen? Here is what's going to happen. Schools are going to close. Kids aren't going to be able to go anywhere except go home. Parents can't take them to work. Parents end up staying home. Nobody's available to provide maintenance on these things. Things have to fall apart. Shit starts breaking. And there you go. So, yes. There is a very simple path between what's happening now and what could happen in the future. Skynet is waiting for its moment to pounce. Uh, utilities are exempt from quarantines. Uh, utilities are exempt from uh, quarantine. But like I said, like, you, I mean, sure, you can have a case-by-case -case basis where it's like, well, here's somebody who is maintenance for PG&E. And then, which is already, like Adam says, is already falling apart. And then, well, I got to take care of my kid. I can't come to work. It's like, okay, well, bring your kid and leave him in the front office. Okay, sure, I could do that. Let me do that. You know, so they, cool. They managed to get one person to come in and go work and go do their thing. 
Are, is every business going to open up a, a, a daycare in their front office? I guess so. I guess they won't have a choice. Governments are and should be declaring critical professions that are kept working to kept, keep society running. Yeah, we just got to figure out how to take care of the kids. The kids are going to be the key thing, right? Once the kids don't have anywhere to go and they're stuck at home, somebody's got to stay home with them. We should try to recruit liner and screen everyone allowed on board. Calgary office building was just closed because a kid in, in the daycare had it. Jesus Christ. Oh, God, they'll just get wool underwear. Saves a lot of fuel. <laughs> a lot of high schools suddenly become babysitters. The high school. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, they do have critical personnel. But what happens when those are sick or afraid? Yeah. Or yeah. Yeah. Or sick, sick or afraid. And we just saw as of what Monday they said conservative numbers are 500,000 deaths uh, for this thing. So let's just say he's way wrong. Maybe it's only 250,000 deaths. Maybe he's, maybe he's even, you know what? Maybe the fucking number's way overblown. Maybe it's only 100,000 deaths. We are sitting at 4,718 right now, according to this. Um, can you imagine what it's like to lose another 95,000? That's a fucking lot. That's a lot. So that's, that's why, you know, we should take measures to try to be more prepared. And now it's time to do it. God, I feel I, I, I hear myself. I feel I, I, I do feel like it's it's so doomsday prepper. But when I get off the stream, at least I know that I did my part. <laughs> I told you guys. <laughs> Retirement home is going to be empty. Well, where's the fallout bunker? Where's the fallout bunker? Suddenly feeling the urge to play more Division 2. Oh my God, that New York update was hilariously timed. Uh, quarter of the are in Italy alone and they gave no fucks. They, yeah, they, they did actually. Um, but there are other countries who also don't give fucks, you know, uh, when, uh, look at, okay. So for example, and I hate to, I hate to use these guys in, as an example, because I understand what they're doing. But, uh, when the universities here in the States started closing down, you know, the kids were gathering outside because it was like, oh yeah, you have to, not only is it closing, but the dorms are closing. You have to find somewhere else to live. Guess what? You have one day to get out. Like, this is a real thing. They give them like 24 hours to basically pack their shit and get the fuck out. Um, and so the kids just started gathering. I say kids, but they're like 18 to 20 something, right? Um, but the, you know, the folks were like gathering outside in these mass groups, just basically like protesting essentially like, where the fuck do we go? Where do we go? <laughs> what do we do? And so, you know, those kind of gatherings are dangerous. It's dangerous to have those kind of gatherings, right? So it's, um, it, it's, it's not that they don't give a fuck. It's just they, they don't know what to do. They just don't know what to do. Uh, Corona is a daily have to give more fucks. Uh, I had an interesting conversation with one of the guys at the new workplace today. He was saying how crazy it is that people are going crazy over the numbers and more people are dying of the regular few each year. Oh my God, that argument. Oh man, the flu argument is so, it's so, uh, naive. <laughs> the flu, something that we understand. Sure, there's variations of the strain, but something that we understand. Casper, oh my God, Casper, I'm, I worry about you, man. Um, yes, more people die from the flu. That are because ex they're exposed to it constantly over the course of an entire year. Absolutely. Uh, the, the death rate, basically, of, uh, for COVID-19 is worse than the flu. The flu is like point something percent, right? I don't have the number, right? But it's like point something percent over the course of a year when millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people are exposed to it. And COVID-19 is sky captain. It says Italy has a 6% death rate now from those contaminated. The flu has point one, and, and Italy is, Northern Italy especially, is saturated. Okay? So what happens when your town gets saturated? And then you're looking at a 6% death rate there. That is, that the saturation is really important. This has not, is, this has not reached the flu numbers uh, the flu raw numbers over the course or annually because it has not gotten there yet. You can be on my team. You're on reload. Oh God, not you too. <laughs> uh, and the flu is not nearly as contagious. That's right. That's right. Um, let me see. Hold on. Let me check something here.
What is this? Oh, let me read this real quick. Uh, shit got real for me today. It says uh, coronavirus memes. Let me pull this over here. I just gotta check it because it's Imgur, so you know. I just wanna read this story. I'm curious now. Uh, let's see. It's uh, oh wait, hold on a second. Okay, I think it's fine. I uh, said so I work at a rather large sewage treatment facility, and we've all been making the usual. It's just the flu comments. Last month, our safety manager ordered twelve thousand. Uh, uh, yes, and twelve thousand and ninety-five masks. I don't know what the twelve thousand is. Um, yes, we're fit tested and fifty sleeping cots. We all laughed and made normal jokes, but today we were asked to consider being quarantined at the facility if healthy to be able to continue keep the, keep the plant running. Wow, uh, I made a few posts before trying to spread the awareness of public workers and the dangers of water treatment workers face every day without the same legal protections as police and fire. The virus has been con uh, confirmed to survive in feces, but I'm aware I'm more likely to get it via person to person. I'm guessing, I guess, I'm just trying to remind people not to be gross and wash your damn hands. I want to be able to go home after work. And as a man, as a man, I guess 50% of the guys don't wash your hands after using the restroom. Seriously, wash your fucking hands, guys. Yes, wash your fucking hands. Um, COVID-19 is way more contagious. So while the flu is normally spread over months, this hits in like one or two months, which then results in hospitals being overrun. So if someone then needs to go in for something else that's, that's ne nearly impossible, it's right. Something that could normally be treated. You can't even get treatment. Um, you know what? Like, that reminds me of like that's what it's like it's in the when you're in the military right i uh, what i did i was in i was in signal and communications and so we basically ran these what are called switches it's basically these huge ass boxes they're kind of like portable like offices kind of it's like you go in it's like screens and giant things full of cards and cables and shit and we would hook up to like satellite satcom systems and and basically we were able to get internet every, everywhere now na nowadays you can get internet everywhere and it's kind of like oh yeah well, like my cell phone whatever but i'm talking like 2000 okay <laughs> All right, let me put on my boomer cap for a second. All right, we're talking like at a time where there was no, uh, we didn't have the 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 option of having secure internet protocols, basically anywhere through you know an encrypted you know device, a two hundred fifty six bit encrypted device. We didn't have that kind of luxury at the time, uh, and so the way it worked was you know wherever we were deployed to, because sometimes being deployed is not like to a city or not to whatever. It's like in the middle of fucking nowhere, and we're by ourselves. And so you end up eating, sleeping, everything around, like in around your gear. You set up your switch, you set up the satellite, you set up the radio antennas, you run the cables, you set up the tents for the command and all that stuff. And you basically live with your gear because you are essential personnel to make sure that that, gear, that piece of gear is constantly up and, and available in case of an emergency. And let me tell you, after 9-11, I was deployed on island, right? I was deployed uh, to main, to basically set up a secure, uh, it's called SIPRNET, right? Secure Internet Protocol. We set up a secure internet between Washington, D.C. And, uh, and, and all of our command out in, uh, out in, you know, in Hawaii, right? And so we provided that network. I, it was on island. I could have driven home and gone to sleep, but we were not allowed to. Initially, we're not. Eventually, that kind of eased up, but we were out there for like months providing this after 9-11 because we just didn't know what the fuck to do. We need a secure internet. We don't know who these people are. We don't know how they, they if they have access to whatever. So we had to set up a completely new network in order to communicate with DC. Um, but what, where did we live? We lived on our gear. And so that story about the sewage plant workers basically getting, getting caught getting gear, uh, getting all this, getting training, all that stuff. It's a very real possibility that utility workers are going to basically be stuck in their job and living with their gear. 24 on, 24 off. Exactly. Yeah. We did a 12 on, 12 off, uh, just so that way we had like some kind of regular sleep schedule and all that stuff. Um, but it, that's, that's, it's the way it is. Like I, I see that I, 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 I've never seen that in, I've never heard of that story translating into you know, civilian life, but it makes sense. It makes sense if the utility workers are, you know, basically, hey, you got to, you know, we, you're kind of an essential. <laughs> you're kind of an essential. Uh, we got, we got to kind of keep you here. That's wild. That's wild. Um, MAC DGM. Oh man. Yes, exactly. I haven't heard that. I haven't heard those acronyms in a long time. <laughs> there are so many acronyms. <laughs> um, my work, wife works for the army. Well, I mean, any any essential personnel in terms of like 
you know, mission essential gear and equipment. Uh, and that, and, and you know, you, I say this in like terms like for the military, but you think of a civilian world. Yeah. Mission essential equipment. What's the mission? Keep everybody alive. Keep society going. Uh, some of those folks will be asked to, you know, live at work. Uh, you're kind of an essential. It's, it's, uh, so here's some extra money because we have to, <laughs> we've uh, had to admit it. Now, please stay here. What does do three, eight hour shifts like every non-military company? Three, eight hour shifts. That's not the military way. You gotta, you gotta run us into the ground and then send us home to sleep. Come back, do it again. Just made yourself a, ni- a nice little Amazon order. Did you get yourself a bidet? <laughs> I wonder if this will affect my job from both the workplace itself uh, closing or Microsoft telling us to close for a bit. Yeah. When our army base gets it, it's uh, it's fun times. My experience with Finnish military was that once something, uh, someone got something, everyone got it. Yeah, that's true. I mean, in those situations, in those situations, exactly. Um, God, let me check. Let me just check online because, like I said, things are changing constantly. So let me go ahead and get to Twitter, and I was probably Reddit in a second here. Um, New Mutants is trending. <laughs> good time for that <laughs> march sadness okay so it seems like you know what it is it's because it's later in the day so usually around this time news starts to kind of slow down a little bit news has to slow down thankfully it starts to slow down a little bit so we can kind of relax some um oh i'm gonna have to not uh see z that hold on my reddit account is not the most work safe let me go over here. I'm just going to see here. Trump now. Oh, God. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> I see Trump now blaming. It's like, I don't want to hear it. Um, let me see. Oh, NC, NC, oh, so here he goes. NCAA. NCAA has officially canceled the 2020 men's and women's college basketball tournament. So NCAA is now done. Uh, AK Corpse. What did I say? Still alive in Colorado. A couple new cases per day popping up here. Well, hopefully it stays that low of a... Uh, of a daily intake or uptick of uh of cases what about project melody <laughs> project melody i you know what it's 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 that what virtual cam girl girlfriend experience whatever uh partnered on twitch before the she even uh before she even started her first stream and then <laughs> Uh, I'm surprised at all that shit. Like it's it's they're, they're allowed. She's allowed to do all that stuff because some of that stuff, if a real person did it, mm, couldn't you couldn't get away with that. But how funny, Project Melody. I tuned in for a little bit, and I was just kind of like, this is, it's like VR chat, you know, just just uh, less personal, I guess. Uh, the only gripe is that Cyberpunk could could not be finished this spring. Yeah, you know, it would be nice. If we could get some of these game releases, maybe like a week early, like Doom, like uh, Animal Crossing, obviously, and then several other things. It'd be nice. Just release shit. Hmm. Just release Alex. Yeah. Yeah. Should have Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. What's up? We have a new season uh, of Diablo 3 tomorrow. Really? Oh, man. I was butthurt about the Animal Crossing being 60 bucks. So I got plenty to do in Ori. That's true. Yep. Uh, one to make a friend a terror yesterday, but they were in contact with a lot of people before they went to the hospital. The new, let's see, D3 league starts. Oh, wait, what? Oh, POE's got a league starting tomorrow too. They time that shit like together like that. I'm sure it's happened before, but, um, don't need games. We can rewatch Tets. <laughs> That's right. We're in the end game. Now we're going, we're going through a slow snap. Um, Time to get back into WoW Classic. You know what? I mean, now's a great time to get back into some of these games and just start living in them. <laughs> just start living in them. Uh, and just, you know, <laughs> trying to just soak up your time. Let me tell you, Oxygen Not Included is a great way to pass time. You don't even know what time is. It doesn't even exist. It's like Oxygen Not Included exists in a time warp. You, you start playing it, and then the next thing you know, four or five hours has passed. And the whole world is freaking out from a pandemic. I was just playing Oxygen Included. What the fuck happened? Uh, Rimworld. Yeah, Rimworld. That's another good one. Absolutely. Banish is another good one. Yeah. Banish is another good one. Uh, 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 uh. Let me see. God, I don't even know. There's so many. Factorio. Thank you. That's what I was trying to think. Yeah, Factorio. The new Ori game. There you go. I'm sure some of you guys have already either watched or already played uh, the new Ori. I haven't got a chance to touch it yet. I'm not really in the mood to play games. <laughs> I, I, I could not come back here today and just 
play games. I could not, I could not just be like, okay guys, let's go and play the new Ori. Like I just couldn't do it today. This is not the day to do it. And tomorrow might be the same. Um, it's just, uh, yeah. Fell seal, fell seal. I mean, that game I'll champion for the rest of my life. That's a game that will absolutely give you plenty to do. Um, turn-based strategy game, very easy, low maintenance. You could just have it on, play it and then walk away, come back, play a little more, walk away, you know, turn-based strategy. It's what you do. Uh, so for more stuff with you, Mike, and all of us together, we could freaking pass the time, uh, low energy chilling together at the end of the world. That's right. As long as I still have internet connection and you know, I'm not sick and no one in my family is sick. Uh, I do plan on being here. I do. I do. I, I, this, this is what I do. This is my job, right? So, uh, I enjoy it. I, I hope that, you know, I hope that today, um, I was able to, I don't know, help some of you guys, I guess, understand that it's okay to freak out a little bit, (laughs) uh, but just a little bit. Digi, thank you so much. Was that three years? Three years. Thank you, Digi. Um, and also, you know, just, uh, it's okay to be anxious. It's okay to let this stuff get to you. You know, this is, these are weird times. Nobody knows how to feel, but, uh, but, you know, just take care of your local situation. That's all. I had rice in my grocery order. Thanks to you. Good. Hey, Mervzy, I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Um, yeah, it's, it's. Rice is a good food, man. <laughs> I'm telling you, rice, steam rice, an egg, and some sriracha, or any kind of hot sauce. Very easy and very, very filling breakfast. Very filling. Two eggs. Two eggs, though. Um, and you'll be, you'll be set all the way th- easily through lunch. You could put spam on it, but spam, I mean, spam is good. I, mean, I love spam, but if you want something basic, we could, we could add more stuff to it and make it more complicated. But I'm talking basic. Two eggs some hot sauce, and rice. White rice. It's all you need. All right? Spam too complicated. Spam, you gotta fry that shit up and just eat that. Just, oh, I love spam. Um, but yes, like I said, it's okay, it's, it's okay to, to feel like, to feel overwhelmed. I have felt overwhelmed over this past couple weeks. Uh, and I feel better now because I feel like I could talk about it. I feel like I can you know, talk to you guys about it. And, you know, you're going to see people, you, you, I, honestly, you're going to see people who are notable folks. You're going to see streamers uh, that are notable who are going to be inflicted by this. And you know what? You might, you might, some of them might, if they're older or unhealthy, uh, immunocompromised, you might see worse. Um, or you might not see any of that. And maybe this whole thing disappears tomorrow. But we don't know. Uh, if you want more Corona Entertainment, check that news on the F1 race in Australia. Even the teams have no idea what is going on. Fucking wild. It's the flu shrug. <laughs> don't be that guy. Um, what kind of news did I miss today? You missed, you missed a good one. But uh, let me go ahead and actually end this now. I'm going to clip this put on YouTube. So, uh, YouTube... Hello, more Oxenite Cluda episodes are starting again next Monday, so you're going to miss Friday, sorry. <laughs> uh, but yes, thank you so much for joining me. It's kind of an impromptu strange news session, but I'm glad we got it out there, talk about it a little bit, and I guess we're going to have news again next week for sure. Fuck. Because <laughs> shit keeps happening. Chat, thank you. I, I, I will see you guys all next week. <laughs> And in a minute too and so yeah stay safe stay safe wash your hands do all that shit right please please and get yourself a bidet okay get yourself a bidet <laughs>